please like, share and subscribe my channel. As it takes lots of support from you and effort to come up with a video. If you want to have more of the MEO class 1 and MEO class 2 related question, please mention it in the comment section below. Unclose question. Give a brief history and necessity towards formation of unclose. What are its important highlights? Under context explain. Territorial C. Contiguous zone. Exclusive economic zone. Continental self. High seas. Brief history. The law of the sea developed from the struggle between coastal states who sought to expand their control over marine areas adjacent to their coastlines. By the end of the 18th century, it was understood that states had sovereignty over their territorial sea. The maximum breadth of the territorial sea was generally considered to be three miles the distance that a shore-based canon could reach and that a coastal state could therefore control. In the early 20th century, some nations expressed their desire to extend national claims. To include mineral resources, to protect fish stocks, and to provide the means to enforce pollution controls. Using the customary international law principle of a nation's right to protect its natural resources, President Harry S. Truman in 1945 extended United States control to all the natural resources of its continental shelf. Other nations began extending their territorial seas to 12 nautical miles. After the Second World War, the international community requested that the United Nations International Law Commission consider codifying the existing laws relating to the oceans. The Commission began working towards this in 1949 and prepared four draft conventions, which were adopted at the first UN Conference on the Law of the Sea. Unclose 1 at Geneva in 1958. Unclose 2 at Geneva in 1960. Unclose 3. The origins of the convention date from 1 November 1967 when Ambassador Irvid Pardo of Malta addressed the General Assembly of the United Nations and called for an effective international regime over the seabed and the ocean flow beyond a clearly defined national jurisdiction. This led to the convening, in 1973, of the Third United Nations Conference on the Law of the Sea, which after nine years of negotiations adopted the convention. The resulting convention came into force on 16 November 1994. Unclose is a treaty of 446 articles grouped under 17 part heading and 9 annexes. Important highlight salient features of Unclose are as follows. It defines international law of the sea. Sets widths of the territorial sea at 12 nautical miles with a contiguous zone at 24 nautical miles. Sets transit passages through international straits and territorial sea. Sets exclusive economic zone extending to 100 nautical miles. It defines continental self and jurisdiction over the resources of the shelf beyond 200 m where appropriate. It defines legal status of the high seas and establishes regulations for the control of the marine pollution. It allows dispute to be settled in the International Court of Justice. The convention has created three new institutions on the international scene. The International Tribunal for the Law of the Sea. The International Seabed Authority The Commission on the Limits of the Continental Shelf The Territorial Sea The sovereignty of a coastal state extends to an adjacent belt of sea, described as the Territorial Sea. The breadth of the Territorial Sea is up to a limit not exceeding 12 nautical miles, measured from baselines. Right of Innocent Passage Ships of all states, whether coastal or landlocked, enjoy the right of innocent passage through the Territorial Sea. Passage shall be continuous and expeditious. However, passage includes stopping and anchoring, but only in so far as the same are incidental to ordinary navigation or are rendered necessary by force majeure or distress or for the purpose of rendering assistance to persons, ships or aircraft in danger or distress. Passage is innocent so long as it is not prejudicial to the peace, good order or security of the coastal state. Sea lanes and traffic separation schemes in the territorial sea. The coastal state may, when necessary having regard to the safety of navigation, require foreign ships exercising the right of innocent passage through its territorial sea to use such sea lanes and traffic separation schemes as it may designate or prescribe for the regulation of the passage of ships. In particular, 
tankers, nuclear-powered ships, and ships carrying nuclear or other inherently dangerous or noxious substances or materials may be required to confine their passage to such sea lanes. Contiguous Zone The contiguous zone may not extend beyond 24 nautical miles from the baselines from which the breadth of the territorial sea is measured. In a zone contiguous to its territorial sea, the coastal state may exercise the control necessary to prevent infringement of its customs, fiscal, immigration or sanitary laws and regulations within its territory or territorial sea. Punish infringement of the above laws and regulations committed within its territory or territorial sea. Unlike the territorial sea, the contiguous zone only gives jurisdiction to a state on the ocean's surface and flow. It does not provide air and space rights. Exclusive Economic Zone The exclusive economic zone shall not extend beyond 200 nautical miles from the baselines from which the breadth of the territorial sea is measured. Rights, Jurisdiction and Duties of the Coastal State in the Exclusive Economic Zone In the Exclusive Economic Zone, the coastal state has Sovereign rights for the purpose of exploring and exploiting, conserving and managing the natural resources, whether living or non-living, of the waters superjacent to the seabed and of the seabed and its subsoil, and with regard to other activities for the economic exploitation and exploration of the zone, such as the production of energy from the water, currents and winds. Jurisdiction as provided for in the relevant provisions of this convention with regard to the establishment and use of artificial islands, installations and structures. Marine Scientific Research The protection and preservation of the marine environment. Rights and duties of other states in the exclusive economic zone. In the exclusive economic zone, all states, whether coastal or landlocked, enjoy the freedoms of navigation and overflight and of the laying of submarine cables and pipelines and other internationally lawful uses of the sea related to these freedoms, such as those associated with the operation of ships, aircraft and submarine cables and pipelines. Continental Shelf The continental shelf of a coastal state comprises the seabed and subsoil of the submarine areas that extend beyond its territorial sea throughout the natural prolongation of its land territory to the outer edge of the continental margin or to a distance of 200 nautical miles from the baselines from which the breadth of the territorial sea is measured where the outer edge of the continental margin does not extend up to that distance. The outer limit of the continental shelf shall not exceed 350 nautical miles from the baselines from which the breadth of the territorial sea is measured or shall not exceed 100 nautical miles from the 2,500 meters isobath, which is a line connecting the depth of 2,500 meters. The coastal state exercises over the continental shelf sovereign rights for the purpose of exploring it and exploiting its natural resources. The coastal state shall have the exclusive right to authorize and regulate drilling on the continental shelf for all purposes. All states are entitled to lay submarine cables and pipelines on the continental shelf. High seas High seas are all parts of the sea that are not included in the exclusive economic zone, in the territorial sea or in the internal waters of a state, or in the archipelagic waters of an archipelagic state. Freedom of the high seas The high seas are open to all states, whether coastal or landlocked. It comprises, inter alia, both for coastal and landlocked states. Freedom of navigation Freedom of overflight Freedom to lay submarine cables and pipelines Freedom to construct artificial islands and other installations permitted under international law. Freedom of fishing. Freedom of scientific research. The high seas shall be reserved for peaceful purposes. No state may validly purport to subject any part of the high seas to its sovereignty. Other high seas provisions prevention of the slave trade, piracy, seizure of ships, illicit narcotics trafficking and unauthorized broadcasting. For enforcement purposes, there are provisions for relevant rights of visit, seizure, arrest and hot pursuit. Internal Waters A nation's internal waters include waters on the landward side of the baseline of a nation's territorial waters, except in archipelagic states. It includes waterways such as rivers and canals, and sometimes the water within small bays. In inland waters, sovereignty of the state is equal to that which it exercises on the mainland. The coastal state is free to make laws relating to its internal waters, regulate any use, and use any resource. In the absence of agreements to the contrary, 
foreign vessels have no right of passage within internal waters, and this lack of right to innocent passage is a key difference between internal waters and territorial waters. The archipelagic waters within the outermost islands of archipelagic states are treated as internal waters with the exception that innocent passage must be allowed, although the archipelagic state may designate certain sea lanes in these waters.